which basically almost every single kid needs a spot on um, for a long time. <laughs> and that's just a strength thing. You get these kids that come in strong, they learn a pullover in a day, yeah. right? Um, unfortunately, that's not the vast majority. Um, it's a fairly small percentage. So one of the things that you want to do with pullovers and just if you need them to have a bar station where you want them to work on pullover stuff um, and they can't do a pullover yet, you can, you can make this a varied thing. If you can do pullovers, work on your pullovers. If you can't, try to just do a pull up. Try to jump up and hang with your chin above the bar. Try to hang on the bar and bring your toes to the bar. Try to do a pull up and then lift your toes as high as you can. So there's all these variants in just doing that and say, okay, that's great, do that 15 times. You know, and, and then they'll do that because if they're able to finally get so they can do this fairly well, well, that's the first step of actually being able to do the pullover. And if they're just hanging, you know, because you get this all the time, right? Okay. Throw your head back more and, than Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's key too, is because if you bring your head back, you break your shoulder angle, but you also extend your spine. You've just made the skill harder. You want to keep that head in and just work on. So tell them when they do it, they should be looking at their knees the whole time. So look at their knees and try to just. And just try to get your feet up as well as you can. Now, can you bring your toes to the bar and hold it there, right? So they go up. And just st static hold for a couple of seconds. But they always just put their feet. I was going to say they hook yeah, their toes. No, on top. Oh, on top, yeah, that's the hop. hop on top too. <laughs> but they'll go through. You know, you also you get this, right? Yeah. And then they go through. And yeah. then they really extend. Yeah, I can't actually even fit through that way. Kids can. But yeah. And if they go over, so what? No big deal. So they don't skin the cat and they fall off. Um, but that's just a lot of the, uh, all that build up stuff to the pull up. It's just that pull, lat strength, lat and ab strength. That's all it comes down to. And we've got to just get them hanging on bars all the time to, to start developing that. What about uh, having um, some kind of an obstacle so that they can lift up their body and they can lay on top of it? It's going to be somebody here. Inside. Have the bar instead of Two. here, have yeah. here, and then they can. Oh, well, the, the we'll wedge have map. The kickovers. <coughs> you can use the parallel bars. You set them like that, but depending on the size of your kids, you have a bar out. Actually, JB, can you give me? Uh, walk hands and knees, walk. please. What? <laughs> uh, sideways. So, yeah. JB, you're going to be my bar. So, oh, okay. hands and knees. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you get a, another object that they can put one <coughs> on here and then work on <laughs> Right? Uh, or, you get our small bar, you set that up near the wall with the wedge mat, mm -hmm. and they can walk up the wedge mat and kick over from there. Right. And that's just getting them the sense of that you know, rotation. And it's a station you won't have to spot them on to right. get through that. So there's a few ways of doing that. Stack up mats, put a box, whatever. Um, but get them up something high. And then once they're getting to where they can actually start kicking and they're kind of close, or they can do what I just did with JB, then we want to start really thinking about the kickover from the ground. Now the key thing here is most kids, when you start thinking kickover, are going to do this. They're going to go, okay. Yeah. Right? They're kicking that way and throwing their head that way. Guess what? They could repeat that 5,000 times. It's never going to happen. Okay? So they really need to understand, and this goes back to the candlestick, it's about getting your toes up and over and then following your toes. And so they have to start with their foot in front of the bar. Here. This is kind of the ideal. If you can get the bar so it is just under their chin, that's kind of optimal height for them. Lower than that makes it harder. Higher than that makes it harder. So right here is kind of ideal spot. So they can stand like this. And then what we're trying to get them to do is just really kick and look at their toe, okay? And even if you do just that a couple of times, where they're here, they look down, they <laughs> and you see I'm kicking into a fairly wide split, because you also get a lot of kids that'll do this. And the instant this foot passes their, their ground leg, their foot comes off the ground. And they just lost uh, all this extra
extra push they could get by keeping that foot on the ground longer. I want them to really get that foot up there before this foot leaves the ground. Does that make sense? And then kicking over, and I use that window all the time. I say you're trying to put your feet through that window. Because you're going to get that <coughs> really pulling up and over. And, then, yeah. and of course we get this. You have to stop the feet. <laughs> right? Um, so that, and that's going to happen. They're going to figure out that last little bit over time. They'll just learn to start pulling it in. What, you know, you're trying to place the, the bar like mid-ab or rib cage, but most kids just kind of figure that out after a little while. If they're strong enough to get over the bar, then I let them just work on it a lot and they'll figure it out. Um, now as far as spotting the thing, it's actually important how you spot it, because if you spot it incorrectly, you're going to start encouraging bad technique. Jamie, come here. 